Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty awesome little $99 prepaid Android device from Boost Mobile. And by prepaid, I mean you pay as you go. You don't have to sign up for a contract, you buy the phone outright, and then you just buy the service you want. Be it $15 a month up to like $55 a month. I recently picked this up from my local Walmart for $99, and I saw online that they were running a promotion on this same device here, at least Boost Mobile was. For $239, you could get a year of service and the device itself. This is known as the Solero 5G, and at a $99 price tag for the specs that this thing's packing, I think it's well worth it if you're looking for a budget prepaid Android device. So inside of the box, we're going to get our USB Type-C charging cable and a 15-watt power supply. Plus, obviously, we'll get the device itself. Now, when it comes down to it, definitely one of the best $99 Android phones that I've tested on the channel so far. I personally love these prepaid devices, these cheaper devices. I get more enjoyment out of using these and reviewing them than I do high-end $1,000 phones. And it really comes down to just seeing how far these cheaper devices have come in the last few years, and they've definitely come a long way, as we're going to see with this one here. When it comes to the version of Android that's installed, it's Android 11, and the only bloat that was on here was a carrier service activation application. Everything else is Google Apps. There were no extra games or applications installed with this. It's a really clean ROM when you think about prepaid phones and Android. So taking a look at the device over here on the right hand side, we have our volume rocker and a fingerprint reader slash power button. And I got to say, the fingerprint reader works really well here. It's definitely pretty snappy for a $100 device. Over on the right hand side, we have our SIM card slash micro SD card tray, and this will support up to a one terabyte micro SD card. Not much at all going around up top here, but if we take a look at the bottom, we do have our single speaker, USB Type-C, and they've kept a headphone jack. So we do have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack on this unit. But what actually has me excited about this device are the specs. For the CPU, we get the MediaTek Dimensity 700. We get two A76 cores running at 2.2 GHz and six A55 cores running at 2 GHz. The GPU is the Mali G57 MC2, 4 GB of LPDDR4X RAM, 64 GB of internal storage, plus that micro SD card slot, a 6.5 inch HD plus V IPS display at 720 by 1600. Not the highest resolution, but it still looks great on a budget device here. Round back, we have a 16 megapixel camera, 5 and 2. Round front, we've got an 8. Built in 802.11 AC Wi Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, and it's running Android 11 right out of the box. And like I mentioned, this is a super clean Android 11 ROM. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into some testing. First up, some video playback. Now, since we only have that 720 by 1600 display, going to 1080 or even 1440 really doesn't make sense. But I still wanted to show you that this Dimensity 700 could handle it. We'll just go down to 1080 from 1440. I have stats for nerds on. We do have a few drop frames. But I mean, when it comes to video playback from YouTube, you're going to be good to go with HD content. But there is one unfortunate drawback when it comes to the Solero 5G and HD content from your favorite apps. Unfortunately, this is Widevine Level 3, which is basically the lowest level we can get, so we can't do HD content from Netflix, Hulu, and HBO Go. Hopefully, down the road, this does get that L1 certification, but right now it's sitting at Level 3, and that's really unfortunate for such a nice device like this. Now, one of the first things I always do with these devices is run some benchmarks. I like to see how these things perform. First up, Geekbench 5, we got a single core of 544, multi 1695. Taking a look at the GPU benchmark, we have 3 Mark Wildlife with a 1,109. This is a Vulcan API benchmark. It's not looking bad at all for the price we paid here. And finally, we have Antutu. And for this one, we got a 235,859. If we were to compare this score to something like a Snapdragon 730, those around 324,000, so we do have a big uptick when it comes to that 730, but keep in mind, this is a $99 pay-as-you-go device. Next thing I wanted to do was check out a little bit of native Android gaming. First up, we have Minecraft Pocket Edition, 14 chunks, fancy graphics on, looking great here. And the controller I'm using here is the Razer Kishi. It connects to the device over USB Type-C, and it works great with this one here, as you can see. Taking it up a bit to Call of Duty Mobile, frame rate is set to high, graphics is at low because I didn't take the time to download the HD pack, but I'm pretty sure we'd be able to run this at 60 medium settings on this device. But what you're seeing on screen now is low settings with frame rate set to high, and it works great with this game. I've had really good luck with Call of Duty Mobile on lower end devices. 
And the final game I wanted to test here was Genshin Impact. I gotta say I'm really impressed by the performance here. We'll go into our graphic settings. I got a mix of medium and low, but we are at 60 FPS. If you took this down to the lowest at 60, it's gonna run great, but you can definitely mix it up with those medium settings. Now, every once in a while, I do notice a stutter here and there, and that's just kind of normal for a device like this trying to run this game. Going down to the lowest settings will alleviate all of that, but I think it looks really good with these medium low settings and it's fully playable. I mean, I was really surprised because this is a harder game to run on Android, especially at 60 FPS. Okay, so now it's time to move over to some emulation, and this is also really impressive. First up, N64, Loop N64 Plus, FZ from the Google Play Store. Conker's Bad Fur Day, 920, 720, rocking out. It's looking really good here. This device is going to have no trouble handling N64, so let's take it up to Dreamcast. So here's Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator at 1280 by 960 and I could go a bit higher but we're kind of limited by that screen resolution. 1280 by 960 looks great and we're running at 60 FPS is up in the top left hand corner. Just like in 64 this isn't going to have any issues with Dreamcast be it using the ReDream emulator which I'm using now or Flycast. We definitely have enough power to push both of these systems at full speed so let's move to PSP. I'm using the standalone version of PPSSPP, 3x resolution, Vulcan back in, really great performance with PSP games, especially the easier to run ones. This isn't a super hard game to run, and uh, that's something I definitely want to test in this video. When it comes to games like Chains of Olympus or Ghost of Sparta, you're probably going to have to drop it down to 2x, but you're still going to get great performance. Here's Chains of Olympus running at full speed. I know it's a bit hard to see. The FPS is in the top right hand corner, but it's running at 60. And the final thing I wanted to test with this device was some GameCube emulation. So I'm using Dolphin MMJR, I'm using their latest build. This is a fork of Dolphin MMJ, and if you take a look at the latest release of MMJ, it's about two years old, but these guys have kind of taken the reins with Dolphin MMJR, and I'm actually blown away by the kind of performance we're getting out of these lower end devices using this specific emulator. I think they've done an amazing job optimizing this and just keeping up with it. Here's Sunshine. I did have to swap over to OpenGL to get this kind of performance, but we're running at 30. Again, you will see some frame dips. I mean, in order to run GameCube really at full speed, you want one of the most powerful devices on the market. That's just how it is. But with something like Dolphin MMJR, it is possible to run a lot of these easier to run games on a device like this. But it doesn't mean that everything's going to run at full speed. This is a harder one to run. It's one of my go-to tests. Here we are with Automodalista. I tried OpenGL and Vulkan. Vulkan does perform better with MMJR on this device. But as you can see, we just don't have enough power to push this specific game at full speed. But to see the other stuff or the easier to emulate games running on a $99 device like this is really, really impressive. So in the end, when it comes down to the performance of the Solero 5G, at $99, this is kind of a no-brainer. I mean, this is one of the best performing devices that I've ever tested at $100, specifically an Android device. And it's just really awesome to see these inexpensive devices getting up there with mid-range phones that cost twice as much, sometimes even three times as much. Now, this is definitely not competing with a flagship device. It's not even competing with a flagship device from around three years ago. The Galaxy S10 will still outperform this, and you can pick those up for relatively cheap online refurbished. But if you're on a pay-as-you-go service like Boost Mobile right now, and you're looking for a new device for around 100 bucks, this is something that I could recommend. It's definitely one of the best $99 Android devices that I've tested on the channel, and I suspect that we will see more of these coming out in the future. But at the time of making this video, I think this is a great bang for your buck. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about this, I will leave a few links in the description. If there's anything else you want to see running on this device in the future, I can do a video. Just uh, let me know what it is in the comments below. And like always, 
Thanks for watching.